Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user YouSuckBeb. I keep receiving texts that my boyfriend is cheating on me, 23 female, 29 male. My boyfriend, 29, and I, 23, have been dating for two years. We live together. In the early stages of our relationship, he carried out an eight-month-long emotional affair with a past lover. We took time apart and he came to understand that emotional cheating is very much a real thing and very much cheating. He accepted his faults and worked hard on being a better man. It has been forever since and everything between us has been great. We were both recently laid off two months ago so we spent all our time together. Besides small errands, he's literally with me 24-7 as we work on goals together and getting jobs again. We were focusing in on ourselves and really working towards that. Close to a month ago at 4 a.m. I received a detailed text about how my boyfriend was cheating for the previous three weeks, listing specifics about his genitals. I am very secretive about my number, only 20 people have it and none of them are mutual between my boyfriend and me. I don't list my number on social media so of course my heart sank. I woke him up and confronted him. He spent the next week pulling up phone records, bank statements and emails to prove he wasn't straying and where he was every time he was away from me. During the three weeks that the message was referring to, we were rarely apart and even spent a week out of state together. I have open access to everything and regularly check his phone, he consents. I have seen nothing offside and all of his texts and phone calls were recorded. No unknown numbers were listed. He doesn't own a second phone or a work number. I eventually decided to let it go as he spent all this time proving his innocence and we were around each other too much for him to have any time to be straying. The past occurrence made me feel sketchy, but I do trust him now and felt this could have been some sort of sabotage. Now, tonight I received another message, again from an anonymous number. It said they saw my boyfriend recently. He came over to yell at them and tell them that they had no right to tell me. They said this was last weekend, the only day he's been away from me all day since I got the first text. Again I confronted him and again he pulled up records. The timelines and the history with us make me feel like I'm not seeing this objectively. I don't want to end things with him over a past mistake and a red herring. But I also don't want to be naive and continue a relationship with a cheater. Well, OP, this is not an easy situation. I mean, first of all, he did emotionally cheat on you. You decided to forgive him and try to give your relationship a chance, but you don't trust him. Which is very easy to understand because who trusts a cheater, right? But again, you guys seem to have worked through it. You forgave him. Another chance. Here we go. And now you get these anonymous messages with some sort of proof that give you big, big pause. I guess to me, if I was in your shoes is, do you really trust your boyfriend? If the answer is no, then it's maybe just time to cut your losses and to move on. Because if an anonymous text is going to give you pause like this, the relationship is going to be a nightmare. Now, you say that only a handful of people have your number. Well, that should give you some sort of shortlist as to how you can identify the person that has this information and maybe ask them, like, what other proof do you have? I guess my question here would be, who have you shared intimate details about your relationship with that they could know something to sort of frame your boyfriend since you spoke of sabotage? Like I said, it's a pretty complex situation, but again, I would boil it down to, do you trust your boyfriend or not? I couldn't say for sure that he cheated, but given his history, it wouldn't surprise me. What about you guys? What do you think about this situation or what would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. User Pi says, If I was innocent of cheating and an anonymous third party told my partner I was cheating, I would be doing everything in my power to discover that libelous third party, not showing my girlfriend that I had an alibi. Secret Code says, a text sent from an anonymous, untraceable source which trots out wiener facts instead of trying to break devastating news to you gently is a text that was sent with purely malicious intent. Is your boyfriend cheating? Who knows? Regardless of how many people are eyeing his junk at this very moment, it's safe to say you are not the only person who has ever seen his genitals. This certainly could be a malicious ex or an unstable, cruel friend. Or he could be boning someone on the side who's now trying to break you up. 
there's just not enough information to know for sure. What you do know is that one of those other people, whether they examined his naughty bits yesterday or 12 years ago, has decided to do everything in their power to hurt you, and by extension, him. If he is having an affair, he's cheating on you with someone toxic and juvenile. And they're both savvy enough to cover their tracks, but his alibi seems pretty solid. Right now, I would focus on the fact that you are both being harassed by an anonymous person who obviously has malicious intent. Tell your boyfriend that you trust him more than some random text message. Quit letting him respond to this by digging through phone records and bank statements like this is an IRS audit. Instead, sit down and try to work out a strategy together to figure out who the hell might want to hurt the two of you so bad and how can you block them. Once he stops being defensive and you ask him to come to your defense, you may get another kind of answer. Dinosaur Train says, only a handful of people have your phone number, so some crazy ex in the woods wouldn't have access to you unless they have access to one of your close friend's phones. So, being that your number is hidden and private, I think one of your friends wants to tell you but doesn't want to get involved in the drama. Isolate your mutual female friends. Maybe he cheated with one and she's pissed. Maybe lies involved. But doesn't want to ruin your friendship by outing herself. Who knows? It's all a big guessing game. But the person does have your number, genital details, and was able to identify an action on a specific day where he wasn't accounted for. Who has your phone number and also lives close enough for him to go by that day? Think about that person and if it makes sense. I'm leaning towards cheating, he's done it before. Well, the community raised some pretty good points and questions, but nothing that could definitely say, yeah, sure, he's cheating, at this point is more of a gut feeling based on past history. Now, OP has given us two updates, so let's move on with the first one to see how this story continues. A lot of people wanted an update, so here goes. I started asking more questions and he didn't seem very fond. He'd be defensive right away and almost seemed upset with me for asking. I knew something wasn't right. Upon inspecting his phone records, I found out that back in October he contacted the ex he cheated with. The texts were short, but he had agreed 100% no contact ever. I eventually had to message her and asked for screen caps of their conversation, which was incredibly awkward as I've never talked to her before. Their conversation was innocent, but he never told me about it and deleted it off his phone. This alone felt like a deal breaker. During the time we were broken up, he swore up and down that he was never with anyone. I said I didn't care, just needed to know for health's sake. Well, lo and behold, we both got HPV and I started to question him more and more. And instead of being honest about something I didn't give a crap about, he lied and lied some more. First he just hung out with her a few times, then it was just making out, then just heavy petting, then hand jobs, then oral, then just sort of went inside but it didn't work BS. He's been trickle-truthing the hell out of me for months and gave me an STD. Now, I don't think the HPV meant he was cheating. I do believe he picked it up when we were broken up and passed it on, which is rude because I asked him about other people prior to sleeping together again. My point is that he was careless with my health when I asked. He isn't some random. He was my best friend and boyfriend, and I think after forgiving him for cheating, I at least deserved to know if I was at risk. Then, I could have chosen for myself if I wanted us to get tested first, or if I even wanted to continue. He still claims up and down he has no idea about the texts, but if he can't even be honest about effing someone when we were broken up, I doubt he's being honest now. I asked all my friends and family, even calling my sister's friends. Then, he got a message on his phone too. We literally don't have anyone who knows both of our numbers, not even my family. I knew then that the chance of someone having both of our numbers was too low for it to be some random ex or friend. He also doesn't update social media about his whereabouts. I told him it's weird he never went out of his way to find out who this is. He seemed defensive. I've decided to let it go and move back home. The idea of him sleeping with someone else really hurts, but he's probably already doing that anyways. I don't have solid proof, but I think this is good enough. When he first cheated on me, he never came clean on his own and continued to lie for months after forgiveness was given. I think if a significant other ever had the courage to come clean, I'd forgive him, 
it's really lying that gets to me above everything. That I can be crying and begging for the truth and he'll still lie until I put the pieces together. I put up with it a lot longer than I probably should have. He should have been out the door forever when I found out about the cheating, but everyone deserves a chance to fix their errors. I'll never know if he was cheating or not, but I do know I couldn't trust him anymore. Usually, serial lying goes with serial cheating. My only wish is that the anonymous messenger would have at least called me or offered more evidence. If this really was just BS, well, I guess he and I weren't strong enough anyways. Well, P, I gotta say, I agree with the two of you breaking up. Maybe not because of the anonymous texts, but because of everything else that was going on, this relationship was doomed to fail. I'm sorry, but silver lining is, you can take the learnings for your next relationship. Now, like I said, OP did give us a final update, which tells us the identity of the mystery anonymous messenger. So let's move on with that and see how this story ends. A lot of people kept tabs with me after my update to know if I ever found out. Well, yesterday morning, I did. An old friend of mine was sending the texts as sabotage. I had a feeling, given that he didn't seem too concerned when the texts started escalating and becoming violent. Ex-boyfriend and I ended up receiving about 10 in total. He is always the first person to be dramatic or overly worried about me, so it struck me as out of character. I finally confronted him yesterday morning after thinking about the texts. I had saved them as evidence, so I was reading over them again, and I recognized similar dictions. He first denied, but I pushed and he confessed. This friend has been heavily involved in my family for a while now. He hangs out with my family more than I do, so he was able to know certain information about myself and my boyfriend through those connections. He said he wanted my boyfriend out of the picture, didn't approve of the guy, and wanted a shot. My boyfriend wasn't perfect, but he certainly didn't deserve this. Neither of us did. I asked him to clear my boyfriend's name with my family by coming forward. He did, and I will be now asking him to remove himself from my life. I spent the last 12 hours trying to make this up to my ex. I apologized for not believing him. He really did work hard to gain my trust back. No more fun bro nights, all open access, giving me updates, taking photos of where he was. I still think we both handled the situation poorly though, and that reflects on how much foundation we have. He didn't jump to prove innocence, I had to offer suggestions, but I wasn't exactly receptive to giving him the benefit of the doubt given he cheated before. I don't know if we have a future, but I do appreciate that he wasn't cheating on me. Thanks to everyone who followed, some of you were fairly spot on. Sorry for the choppy writing. Mobile, winky face. Ah, the nice guy best friend who wanted a shot. Well, at least now you know the truth and you can just cut him out of your life. Some friend, right? And regarding you and your boyfriend having any kind of future, I honestly do not think that can happen. But of course, that's just my opinion and irrelevant to your story. So, all the best in the future, OP, and take care. Now, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliant, and it's by user Annie Phoenix. Show them all your documents. They will see you deserve no better. Okay, I will show all my documents. To give context, I live Europe in a non-Anglophone country. I have always been a language nerd and since my parents' divorce, English and everything in it, music, movies, internet, was my escape. So I was fluent before most of my classmates and got my CPE, Certificate of Proficiency in English, the highest certification from the Cambridge Council, at 18. In my country, high schools are basically undergrad colleges and are finished between the ages of 19 and 20. And a problem which almost all public schools have is terrible language teachers. Most of them being former Russian teachers with minimal English or any other language education. Also, as my country is small and nobody could reasonably expect to use our language abroad, we put a huge emphasis on language students at all levels of education. And it is often the thing which schools boasts about to become more prestigious. So, enough context. From early on, my last high school English teacher and I kicked it off to a bad start. The first test she gave us came back all red because of words which are not in the textbook. The terrible teacher, TT for short, would do this to me for the full final two years. She would take my essays and tests and cross out any word, phrase or structure which was not in the textbook we were using. I maintained that I will not go as far as to learn the textbook vocabulary by heart, just to remember which synonyms I was allowed to use just because of terrible teacher's antics. 
I have managed to keep an A for three terms because there was nothing she could mark down on my grammar. In the final term, however, Turrible Teacher learned that I wished to go to university to do Anglophone studies, a specialization her daughter had failed to be accepted for. She told me that as an explanation why I cannot ever hoped to be accepted at the start of the term, and which, among other things, required good or even perfect marks from high school language lessons and accepted only 5% of applicants. Terrible teacher was dead set to make me fail. She started giving me the stupidest assignments and extra tests for misbehaving in class. Finishing early and silently staring at the wall, which required me to mark the exact position of Disneyland on this A4 blind map of USA, an exact quote I still remember after all those years, and more of the same crap. You could tell she was so satisfied by my failing these tests, she would have a grin on her face each time handing out the results. By this time I have been representing the school in language Olympics for both English and Spanish, she had no idea because it was organized by another language teacher, and even though the principal made it into a big deal, terrible teacher was plainly uninterested. I have placed third in the capital city district in Spanish and sixth nationwide in English. Not to list this to brag, okay maybe a bit, but to use it later. By the end of the term, she got my mark down to a C-. Mind you, all the grammar was still A's, but her blind maps of tourist attractions had taken their toll. I went to her to reason with her, but her reaction was, If you think a different teacher would propose a different mark, take all your documents and go to one of my colleagues, but I believe it is clear to anyone that you do not deserve any better. So I did. I took all my documents, the bloody blind maps, the grammar tests, my by then a year old CPE certificate and my sixth place diploma. I went to the teacher who organized the competitions and explained my situation. She was furious. She took this to the principal and even though I was waiting outside, I could hear him yell at terrible teacher, You are trying to fail the student who was representing us at the national level of competitions? It also turned out that with the CPE, I had by that time a higher level of English education than terrible teacher had. I got my A. I got to the uni and I love it there. I also started my own tiny language school where, among of course teaching the language to whoever is interested, I help kids whose language teachers are incompetent and or power hungry morons. The impulse for me to write this is that I was walking by the high school last week and meeting terrible teacher. She acted as if we have always been best buddies. A couple of my students are her students as well, so she knows about me. She hugged me in front of the high school kids present and exclaimed that I got where I was thanks to working hard in her lessons. I'm still pissed that I did not get the courage to tell her off then and there. Ah, small people with too much power. OP, don't worry about her, you're better off and thank you so much for sharing. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.